Hi, my name is Barry Blixt, Marketing Manager for Microchip Memory Products. Welcome to this 20-minute web seminar in which we will discuss some recommended usage practices for SPI Serial EEPROMs. Here are some questions that I'll answer during this presentation. First, are you looking for general information on the SPI protocol? We will discuss the advantages of the SPI bus. Are you working on an SPI system and looking for design tips? This web seminar offers suggestions that build upon the information available in our data sheets. Are you looking for ideas about the best way to design a board? We have several hardware recommendations. The SPI bus has several software and hardware write protect options, some of which are controlled by the device's status register. Do you need specifics about how to implement these often confusing options? Most of the information in this seminar is taken from microchip data sheets as well as our application note AN1040 entitled Recommended Usage of Microchip SPI Serial EEPROM Devices. Now let's look at our agenda. We'll begin this seminar with a summary of the major features of the SPI bus. Then we'll look at some hardware recommendations and details. Following that, we will focus on understanding the status register, including its write protect options. We will finish up with a quick summary and some places to find more information. In total, we will cover seven recommendations that represent some of the most often asked questions about SPI EEPROM devices. Let's look at some advantages of the SPI protocol, which is generally known for its robustness as well as its speed. In this slide, you can see a typical SPI EEPROM pinout. Pin 1 is chip select, pin 2 is data out, pin 3 is write protect, pin 4 is ground, pin 5 is data in, pin 6 is the clock, pin 7 is hold, and pin 8 is voltage. Note that the chip select, write protect, and hold pins are all active low. SPI communication is controlled via hardware by the chip select pin. That means that the bus has very good noise resistance since spurious writes can be virtually eliminated by properly controlling the chip select pin and by properly using the write protect features. Most SPI parts have a write protect pin that along with the status register is used to implement several write protect options. These options can protect one quarter, one half, or all of the device array as well as the status register. The bus has a wide density range of 1 kbit all the way up to 1 megabit. The SPI protocol is the fastest of the three EEPROM buses, with most SPI devices having a maximum speed of 10 megahertz. In comparison, microwire devices have a maximum speed of 3 megahertz, and I2C devices top out at 1 megahertz. Finally, SPI is a four wire bus with chip select, clock, data out, and data in all connected to the master with individual signal lines. This requires using several microcontroller pins, but it also means that the designer has more control of the bus and can design a very robust system. On the other hand, the added functionality I just described does add to the die size, so SPI EEPROMs are slightly more expensive than the other two EEPROM protocols. We'll begin the hardware section of this seminar by showing the recommended connections of an SPI EEPROM. This slide shows a typical device. Four of its pins must be connected to the master. Chip select, data out, clock, and data in. These four pins are easily connected to the many microcontrollers that have built-in SPI ports, including many of Microchip's own 8, 16, and 32-bit microcontrollers. Alternatively, SPI EEPROMs can be connected to micros without SPI ports by bit banging, that is, by using I.O. lines programmed in firmware to match the SPI protocol. We have several app notes that describe, with pre-written code, communication via both methods. This configuration shows the basic required connections. Now, we'll begin our list of recommendations. Our first recommendation is to use a pull-up resistor on chip select. Chip select is controlled by the master with a low level needed to select the device. When chip select is pulled high, the device is deselected and will not accept commands. But there is a potential for the chip select pin to float during power up and power down operations. A floating pin can go either high or low depending on several factors. If chip select is allowed to float low, 
the devices selected and random inputs could be interpreted as a write command, which could corrupt data. A pull-up resistor solves this problem by preventing floating during these indeterminate power levels. Our second recommendation is about the hold pin, here shown as pin 7. Hold is used to suspend transmission to the EEPROM in the middle of a sequence so it can be restarted later at the same point. Hold is active low, so it must be held high in order to have normal operations. Most applications do not use the hold feature, but if it is used, hold must be controlled by the master. And, similar to the chip select pin, it should have a pull-up resistor so that it cannot float during power up or power down. Since it is fairly uncommon that designers use the hold pin, the more common implementation is to tie hold high to VCC as I've shown here. Note that a pull-up resistor is still used. This connection scheme prevents the hold pin from floating, but it does disable the hold function. This configuration also frees up a microcontroller pin. Our third recommendation is a quick one. Remember good engineering practice by adding a decoupling capacitor of approximately 0.1 microfarads. It should be as close to the device as possible to help filter high frequency noise from the power supply. Write Protect is the last input pin that we need to discuss as our fourth recommendation. If using the Write Protect pin is not required in an application, it can be permanently connected to VCC. This configuration, while saving a microcontroller pin, does disable the Write Protect pin. And a pull up resistor must be used to prevent Write Protect from floating. Alternatively, if hardware Write Protect is required in an application, the pin is controlled by the master. And, as with the other input pins, write protect cannot be allowed to float. If the pin is being used, we recommend a pull down resistor on write protect. And this completes our hardware recommendations. Let's review those hardware recommendations now. First, there is a pull up resistor on the chip select pin. Second, the hold pin is either connected to the master or, more commonly, hold is disabled by being tied high. Third, a decoupling capacitor is utilized. Finally, the write protect pin is either disabled by being pulled high to VCC or is connected to the master via a pull down resistor as shown here. Now let's move on to a discussion of the status register. SPI devices have an 8 bit status register shown in table form on this slide. The top row of the table shows the 8 bits labeled 0 through 7. The second row shows the name of each bit, and the third row shows the value of each bit, here all zeros, except for bits 4 through 6, which are don't care. I will introduce each of the bits here and talk in more detail about them later on. Bit 7 is the write protect enable, or WPEN bit. It is only present in 8K bit and larger devices. Bits 2 and 3 are the block protect bits. They determine which part of the array, one quarter, one half, all or none, is protected. The three bits we've just discussed are read-write bits that can be changed by writing directly to the status register. The next two bits are read-only. Bit 0 is the read-only write-in-process, or WIP bit. When no write is occurring, the WIP bit is set to 0. During a write to either the array or to the status register, it is set to 1. The WIT bit can be used to determine when a write is complete. Since the status register can be read at any time, even while a write is in progress, a routine can be set up to monitor the bit. If the WIT bit is 1, a write is currently in progress. When the WIT bit changes to 0, the write cycle is complete and the next command can be sent. WIT polling is a simple method to increase throughput by decreasing wait time. Bit 1 is the write enable latch bit, or well bit, which shows the status of the write enable latch. The latch must be set to 1 in order to write to the device. If the well bit is 0, writes are prohibited. It can only be modified by the user with a write enable or write disable command. We'll go through more details on the latch's functionality on the next slide. Here we'll go through the steps required to set the write enable latch in order to allow writes. We will also look at how the status register changes with each step. To begin, we'll look at an unprogrammed status register in step 1. The WPEN bit is set to 0, as are the two block protect bits, 
BP1 and BP0. The whip bit is also zero since no write is occurring. The main point here is that the well bit is zero, meaning that the write enable latch is cleared and writes are not allowed to the status register or to the array. Before writing to the part, we first need to set the write enable latch by using a write enable or ren command shown here as step two. After the command has been completed, the well bit is one, so the latch is now set to allow writes. In our third step, a write command is sent, which is accepted since the write enable latch is set. Note that the whip bit is one during the write cycle to allow whip polling. Step four shows us the status register contents after the write is complete. The well bit has changed back to zero, since in SPI devices, the write enable latch is automatically cleared after a successful write. So now writes are not allowed to the array or to the status register until another write enable command has been sent. The latch is automatically cleared after a write command, as shown here, as well as after writes to the status register or after a write disable command. Compare the operation of this protocol to microwire EEPROMs, which also have a write enable command. But once the write enable command has been sent in a microwire device, writes are allowed until a write disable command is sent, leaving the part vulnerable to unwanted writes. The fact that the well is cleared after writes makes SPI parts a good choice for noisy environments. Our fifth recommendation then is to only set the write enable latch just before a write command in order to minimize the chance of undesired writes. Next, we'll talk about how the status register's block protect bits can protect a portion of the array. Once again, here is our status register, and now we're highlighting block protect bits one and zero. The bits can be set in four different combinations to protect different parts of the array. If the bits are zero, zero, none of the array is protected. If the bits are changed to zero, one, the upper quarter of the array is protected. If the bits are set to one, zero, the upper half of the array is protected. If the bits are set to one, one, the entire array is write protected. The block protect bits are both writable, so they can be changed by writing to the status register. Let's run through the steps needed to change them. Step one shows the status register after a write enable command has been sent. Remember that this command is required to set the write enable latch to one to allow writes. Now we can write to the part. We want to change the block protect bits to one zero to protect the upper half of the array. Writes to the status register are done with a write status register or WRSR command shown as step two. During the write to the status register, the whip bit is one. After the write status register command is complete in step three, the block protect bits have been changed to one zero. And the well bit has been automatically cleared to zero, so writes are prohibited to the status register and to the entire array until the write enable latch is reset. And even if the latch is set to one to allow writes, the upper half of the array is still protected by the block protect bits. Before we move on to the hardware write protect options, remember that the protected segments of the array as set by the block protect bits are always protected. Now let's move on to the write protect pin. One often confusing aspect of SPI serial EEPROMs is that the write protect pin works differently on one through four k-bit parts than on 8K bit and larger ones. In one through four K bit devices, the write protect pin, here pin three, acts as a normal hardware write protect. Recall that the WP pin is active low, so if the pin is held low, as shown here on the left side of this slide, write protect is enabled and writes are prohibited to the array and to the status register. If the write protect pin is high, as shown on the right, writes are permitted to the device's status register. Writes are also permitted to the array itself, except to those segments which have been protected by the status register's block protect bits. And remember that the write enable latch must be set for writes to occur. In 8K bit and larger devices, the write protect pin only protects the status register. This write protect feature is enabled by the following two step process. First, the write protect enable, or WPEN bit, must be set to 1. Recall that it is bit seven of the status register. While the WPEN bit is zero, the write protect pin is disabled. Changing the WPEN bit to a one with a write status register command enables the write protect pin. 
Once the Write Protect pin has been enabled by the Write Protect Enabled bit, the pin controls writes to the status register only. If the pin is pulled low, as shown here, writes to the status register are prohibited. Note that the pin does not affect writes to the array itself. To summarize, in the lower density parts, the Write Protect pin acts as a hardware write protect that can prevent writes to the array and the status register. For higher density parts, the Write Protect Enable bit and the Write Protect pin act together to determine whether the status register is protected. Note that in all cases, protected blocks, as determined by the block protect bits, remain write protected. And in all cases, the write enable latch must be set to one or no writes at all can occur. We have a lot more information about SPI EEPROMs available on our website. Our data sheets are an excellent source that describe how SPI devices work. We also have several educational app notes. I have been referencing AN1040 throughout this seminar. Between it and the product data sheets, you have an excellent baseline to understand EEPROM operations and recommended design practices. We also have dozens of app notes explaining how to interface a microchip SPI EEPROM to many of microchip's PIC microcontrollers. In most cases, these app notes also include downloadable source code. Both the data sheets and app notes can be found at www microchip.com slash memory. Finally, we have several other web seminars on EEPROMs, including an introductory overview, our memory design kit, EEPROM endurance, and the many small package options that are available. And our web seminar about I2C EEPROM recommended usage is also posted. And that completes this web seminar in which we've discussed seven recommendations for SPI serial EEPROM designs. Let's quickly review them now. The first four recommendations are all hardware-based. First, make sure the chip select pin has a pull-up resistor and is not left floating. Next, make sure the hold pin is either disabled by being tied high or is connected to the master. In either case, use a pull-up resistor to prevent floating the pin. Third, use a decoupling capacitor. Fourth, make sure write protect is not floating. Here are the status register recommendations. Don't forget that the write enable latch is cleared after writes are completed and must be reset to 1 before the next write command. Sixth, use the status register's WIP bit to perform WIP polling to improve throughput. Lastly, take advantage of the hardware and software write protect options that we just discussed. Remember that the block protect bits can be programmed in the status register to protect various segments of the array. And remember that the write protect pin only protects the status register in 8K bit and larger devices. To get more details on any of these concepts, please look through our app notes and data sheets. Thanks a lot for your time.